Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the third instalment of this series of videos uh, where we build a Bronco 17 pounder tank buster the Archer. Now in this video we're going to be looking at uh, the construction of the gun and the side panels and uh, the majority of the open back interior. So if you want to grab yourself a brew and a chair uh, let's sit down and let's go do some modeling. So first off we have the uh, seating area. Uh, very delicate uh, items but fit together beautifully well and the uh, kit comes with a couple of springs as some added detail on the seat. Uh, this is where the uh, empty shells go at the back of the uh, gun. Again goes together very well but there are some really bad um, injector marks and they do need to be filled. Uh, there are some on the uh, gun uh, housing as well uh, but those you won't actually see. So this is in the open uh, stance uh, you can actually have it closed if you wish um, and as you can see the springs on the chair stand out rather noticeably i think they're a little bit too big uh, but it looks okay altogether so here we have the uh, adjustments uh, these have fallen off a couple of times so be very careful even though it is fragile it does still feel solid as well with the springs on the chair there we have a little bit of PE also uh, on the uh, empty shell casing holder. Now this enables you to move the um, uh, part around the interior of the tank. No idea I'm going to get to stick that on but that's a problem for later on in the build. There's a few little seam lines that needed filling uh, but no real major issues. Uh, despite the uh, intricacies of the part, this went together beautifully well. Now there is a little bit of roughness on the side of these panels. Now they are actually weld seams, so don't go sanding them off. And there you can see where all the injector marks were being, have been filled in. But yeah, really pleased with that piece of kit. Went together beautifully well. And here are some uh, photographs for the added details so that you can see them closer up. And this is just a little dry fit just to show you the maneuverability so you can actually choose where you want the uh, gun position. But once I've decided it will all be glued in. Now as far as the actual gun housing it goes, uh, as you can see some real bad injector marks. You must take those out otherwise you won't be able to put the two pieces together. And that's them cleaned out few little small parts as well but it does go together nicely if you follow the instructions and then I glued it all into place left it overnight and the barrel just needed a bit of a sand a bit of a clean up but yeah no real main issues here at all and in the kit you are supplied with one shell so that means that you can decide to either have the uh, open or you can have it closed I've decided to go for the, for, for the breech being open so just have a quick look around. You can see there are some very small uh, PE parts. Uh, again, go together quite nicely. But the detail is absolutely stunning. The muzzle brake, that is a separate part. And just be very careful when lining that up. But all together, very good. Now we have a very small sight uh, that needs to be put together. As you can see, some really small parts here. So be very careful. Despite the smallness and the fragility of it, it does go together very nicely with like pretty much everything in this kit. There's lots of scope there for uh, different uh, painting colours as well. So I'm looking forward to getting that one painted and weathered up. Now the actual bow actually has uh, some protective guards around it. Um, very fragile indeed so be very careful um, for the uh, the initiated amongst you you'll notice that I actually put it on the wrong way I didn't actually notice this until it was all fully painted and weathered but uh, uh, not an issue to have got that changed now the barrel actually has a front housing cover um, there's a couple of very small PE parts which are a real bugger to put on uh, so be very careful um, but once done uh, the detail is very nice and again we have another very detailed little telescopic sight with a couple of little parts of PE in there as well and as you can see uh, there's some handles that need to be added as well and there's a little fly nut there as well 
and amazingly none of this got lost I was quite surprised um, it all went together really well and there's uh, some lovely detail now on top of that uh, housing goes the lid which has a couple of telescopic uh, parts they do supply you with clear ones if you want to use those instead and then just to recap because we're looking at uh, parts that we're painting off of the model this was the actual exhaust that we uh, went through on the last video so there we go uh, quite a few spare parts uh, that need to be painted up so first off we're going to uh, mask off the area for the uh, open back interior and all of the uh, other parts um, have been cleaned up and ready for the first coat of primer and as you can see using Mr Finishing Surfer surface 1500 black now I've put a little bit of thin on uh, in this it's probably about 5 to 1 ratio with 1 being the thinner um, beautiful coverage uh, first time I've used this and very impressed with it and I'll certainly be using this further down the line all the parts were done nicely as you can see and all of the smaller items also I went for the black primer uh, just to give because it's been inside of the tank wanted that sort of shadow effect uh, but when I do the outside I'll go back to the uh, red oxide primer And there we go some of the smaller parts just a very neat coverage and it went on really well with the airbrush and it did give quite a hard finish uh, gave me confidence when using the uh, acrylic colors further on so first off I, I use some green stuff uh, antique gold first time I've used green stuff very impressed um, and they've come out really well as we'll see later and then next we applied uh, the olive drab uh, number two from hobby mr hobby and then once that was dry we did some masking um, because there's two camouflage colors uh, there's a blue gray um, as well as uh, on the bowel there was white but also on the cover there was black and there we have a closer look at the olive drab And these came out really well you see a bit of a splodge there in the middle unfortunately I had a bit of an accident with uh, some paint stripper uh, but that's all behind uh, some of the uh, items that go on the side so I wasn't really too fussed the bow did a little bit of hairspray chipping on this didn't want to go too overboard um, but very pleased with how that's come out and then you can gives you an idea of the uh, gray camouflage uh, the blue gray camouflage and the white so just using the uh, hobby uh, mr. hobby paints um, just put a little bit into a mixing pot and then just add a little bit of mr. color thinner In this particular case I wanted it to be fairly thin because I was going to be chipping this paint um, but it's up to you to sort of experiment uh, to find the right consistency that you like if I was using this normally without chipping then I've probably gone for, for less thinner you can just see in the background that I've already done uh, the blue masking um, so that's already been done and what I'm doing here is I'm mixing up the black because the, the black camouflage goes along the bottom uh, of the uh, barrel cover now don't forget I've also been doing hairspray uh, in between each of these layers uh, for the chipping process later on but the thought here is to just do a little bit of band of, of black and then eventually that will be masked off because what I wanted was it was a hard line mask rather than the uh, a soft airbrush mask uh, soft airbrush finish and I was really pleased with how, how this particular part of the uh, process was going so there we go now that that's dry we'll do a little bit of uh, chipping so just get yourself some water and some chipping brushes and I've also got a little wire 
pen there as well your towel and obviously use the brushes to uh, clean off any excess paint so first off we'll just go around and uh, wipe some of the water onto the area that's going to be chipped that gives uh, it an opportunity just to activate the uh, chipping fluid underneath and then once that was all chipped I then masked off the area and then what I did is I, I recoated everything uh, with the olive drab now look a little bit closer at the antique gold um, from green stuff came out really well the uh, clasps they had to be hand painted which was a real pain but uh, got there in the end this is the uh, site as you can see I've used several um, metallic cover colors here all from Vallejo as well as some matte blacks and greys which gives a nice contrast now these are the bottles that were used by the allies a lot of the time you're used to seeing these with their brown uh, covers on but they are in fact blue the actual bottle themselves there's a couple of um, rucksacks a couple of boxes and I just used different colors different shades of grey car keys um, the one with the band down it here that's the um, the medical uh, box and then we have the dials again just using uh, different colors the um, wireless set again olive drab used a light gray in the middle and black and white for the dials and the seats that was a variety of, of different sort of red leather colors along with the lens cover here with a bit of antique gold in there for the uh, straps and buckles really pleased how that came out and then the lenses again a bit of the, you got the leather pads in there and again metallic colors you're not really going to see those so not on a major issue and I just did a little bit of detail painting um, on the interior uh, painted the tubing the wiring different shades of black and greys etc um, had nothing really to go on so it's a bit of artistic license at the end of the day now you can see the barrel in its full glory um, I decided to do the uh, breech in uh, metallic iron just for a bit of difference whether it was like that I don't know but I thought it looked quite smart now you can see the uh, the pentagon shaped part that is in fact um, a canvas map um, and here we have the um, the result of all that masking from the front very impressed how that came out uh, as far as the exhaust goes just a matter of uh, doing some rust colors um, a little bit of smoke um, so yeah there we go it's it's, it's all uh, up and running now uh, everything has been painted on the open back interior and now it's just a matter of starting the weathering and that's what we're going to have a look at in the next video so many thanks to all of my uh, subscribers really appreciate your continued support of my work and thanks for looking in happy modeling everyone